hey. All right. <laughs> it looks like we are working, guys. If you guys can hear me and see me, please give me a thumbs up or say something in the stream, if you would. And I'm going to get, there we go. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, we had some horrendous uh, technical issues with YouTube here the last little bit. And uh, <sighs> it's taken me two weeks to get it figured out. So I'm glad to be back. So I apologize that um, we, we tried to do this, this webinar uh, two weeks ago and uh, couldn't connect. And YouTube has been scrambling trying to figure out why. Ended up not being YouTube's problem. It was something else. But um, looks like we're working. I'm seeing everybody saying that we're there and, and that we're working. So yippee. <laughs> I was a little worried. I have to admit I've been uh, anxious about it all day long. So um, glad that it is working. And it looks like we already have 20 or 30 people here. So we'll kind of get moving along here. So um, let me just uh, kind of tell you what we're doing here. So this is part of our year-round gardening uh, workshop series that I'm going to be doing over the next um, two weeks, really. So between now and the 15th of July, I'm going to do five of these workshops. We'll do this one today. We'll do another one next Friday, same time. And then the week of July 15th, we'll actually do uh, three uh, during that week. So we're going to do one on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, so we'll have uh, uh, quite a few of these coming up for you and uh, all of them will have prizes and so I will send out uh, in Facebook and email lists and all that kind of stuff ways for you guys to sign up for the prizes as well. Uh, we've had some great sponsors that have been willing to, to do some, some good stuff for us so we've got some good prizes. Uh, today we are going to be talking about summer gardening help. Then next week we're going to move into fall gardening and winter gardening and, and stuff like that. So next week we're going to talk about spinach in particular and I've got a whole 20 minute class for you on growing spinach, uh, planting it in the fall so that you can actually get about eight months worth of harvest um, from a spinach crop. And so that's what we'll be talking about next week. And then the following week we've got a lot of good stuff coming as well. So glad it's working. Hi guys, where are you from? Um, let me know what your weather's like. We're going to be pretty close to 100 degrees over the weekend. We've been having some really strange weather, weather that's usually happening in August. Um, it's been happening here in June for us. We had hail yesterday, uh, luckily not very big hail, and so it didn't do too much damage. But um, yeah, it's been uh, kind of crazy. So let's hear what everybody else is like and, and where you're from. And uh, I'm seeing Marysville, Utah. Amarillo, Minnesota, Wisconsin, hot and dry there, 98 in Amarillo. Whew, that's probably humid too. New Jersey, 80 to 95 degrees. Uh, Spokane, Washington in the 80s today. Um, Missouri, New Jersey again, Alberta, Canada, uh, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Louisiana. Awesome. Got a good crowd here, guys. Okay. All right, well, I kind of wanted to just hang out for a minute and let people kind of collect. We've got over 50 people here now. Idaho Falls, hey, I've got family in Idaho Falls, or close anyways. Naples, Florida, San Antonio. Um, okay, before we get started, I did want to thank our sponsors because these guys have actually gone over and above on what they're willing to do. So our sponsors uh, for this workshop are Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots. And in the description of this video, there's links to both of their websites. I would recommend that you go check them out. Honest Seed Company is a, a fun little seed company that uh, does all heirloom and GMO seeds. They have given us three $25 gift certificates to give away as prizes today, and they're going to do that for all of the rest of the workshops that we're doing. Smart Pots has given us two Smart Pots, one 15-gallon and one 5-gallon that we're going to give away today as well, and they're doing the same thing for all of these upcoming workshops as well. So we've got a lot of fun stuff uh, that they are doing, and I just wanted to make sure that I thank them. Links down in the description that you can go click to check out their websites. Um, good stuff. They're uh, great companies and they've been very willing to help and sponsor us. So again, like I said, this is part of the year-round gardening series. And so I wanted to make sure that I, I had you guys hang around. 
we're gonna do, I'm gonna do about 20 minutes worth of um, a class for you and then I'll do a Q&A at the end. Um, so a little bit of etiquette for you. Oh, also because it's part of the year-round gardening series, we have um, our year-round gardening master course coming up and we also have our free year-round gardening mini course and there's a link down in the description that you can click on to go sign up for that free course if you haven't already. So um, go click on that as well and get signed up for that, that uh, free course. Um, this is kind of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about uh, dealing with the heat and I've got four tips for you for dealing with the heat. We're also going to talk about keeping yourself safe just really briefly. A uh, couple of things that I wanted to just go over. Um, no cheats. There's work involved. I do have a little bit of a free offer at the end, so hopefully you're you're not offended by the fact that that I'm also going to want you to, to sign up for for something. But um, definitely wanted to do that. And then let's talk really quick. We are going to do a Q&A at the end, but I, here for about the next 10-15 minutes, I'm going to just teach, and so I can't watch the chat. You know, the chat's going like crazy. We've already got 60 people here. So um, my wife, AJ, is going to watch the chat. And if you have questions, she's going to copy and paste those into it so I can see them on my other computer over here. But kind of hang on to those questions because I'm going to ignore the chat for a little bit while I do the teaching. And then we'll go back. We'll announce our prize winners for this one. And then, we'll, um, then we will uh, go ahead and uh, do a Q&A as well. Okay. All right. So let's see. This is me. Uh, I'm Rick, a founder of the Gardening Academy and the principal author over on Our Stony Acres. I'm a master gardener. I've been gardening for over 25 years now. Uh, it's getting, I think, probably 27 really that we've had some kind of a garden. So um, that's me. And I love gardening. I love teaching about gardening. I've been teaching online for about 10 years now. And so we have a lot of fun. And I'd love to have you guys continue to kind of hang out and be with us. and. Um, so yeah, all right, let's um, talk really quick about some strategies for keeping your garden safe in the heat. And I'm seeing in the chat, I'm seeing lots of people saying it's hot and Houston, Texas, hot with a fire and um, lots, of, lots of heat right now. And so we're gonna talk about a few strategies. So the first thing that I did wanna do is just talk really quickly about keeping yourself safe. Um, I actually, I, I was kind of flattered by this the other day, somebody, mentioned, wow, for 25 years of gardening, you don't have a lot of skin damage on my bald head. Um, and the reason why is because I always wear a hat. I'm very careful. I grew up on a farm and my dad was pretty, um, pretty good about making sure that we always wore a hat when we were out working. And, uh, and so make sure that you wear a hat, long sleeves, work in the morning and the evening, just do the things that you need to do to, um, to keep you safe from the sun as well, okay? All right, so let's go through these four strategies that I have for you to deal with the heat in your garden and um, and how we're gonna deal with this because we are, everybody's coming into the really hot time right now. You know, we've already had some hundreds here. A lot of people are saying it's been up to 100. South Carolina, they're saying up to 100. Um, so let's talk about these strategies and how we can keep our gardens continuing to be productive uh, when it's hot outside, okay? So the first one is we need to continue to make sure that we are very diligent with our watering. So when it gets hot, when we have these big heat waves that come through, we need to make sure that we are watering more often and you need to try and stick to a schedule. Although I don't want you to get so rigid on a schedule that you miss an opportunity, you know? So so I like to, you know, I like to water about every three or four days, but um, you know, if it's really, really hot, then you need to be out there checking. And I always encourage people to use the finger test. So is what you do is you put your, your finger in the ground up to your second knuckle. If the, the tip of your finger is moist, then you don't need to water. But if it's not moist, then it's time to water. And so make sure that you are uh, sticking to a good schedule and, and checking the moisture often. One of the most important things that you can do for your garden is to be out in it and checking and, and watching that, okay? The other thing that I would encourage you to do is to water in the morning. And there's there's a lot of debate about this in the gardening world, but um, kind of the consensus as I've gone through and read a bunch of articles and, and university studies and stuff like that is that it's most beneficial to water in the, the, the few hours before and after sunrise. 
and uh, that sets your plants up for a good day. It gives the water an opportunity to percolate down into the soil below the surface so that it doesn't evaporate. Um, and the other thing that that does is it also allows, if you, if you happen to be sprinkler watering or something like that, it allows those leaves to dry out during the daytime. We don't want water on the leaves at night because that promotes mildew and fungal issues and things like that. And so by far best time of day to water is in the morning. So whenever you can, water in the morning. Um, also remember when it's really hot, if you're growing in containers, like I've got you know six or eight, uh, actually it's more like eight or 10 smart pots right now. And you know I'm having to watch those guys and, and water nearly every day. So if you've got containers, remember that they're, they need special attention in the heat because they're up and exposed and can often um, really dry out quickly if you are not careful. And it doesn't matter what kind of container you're using either. Just the fact that it's up out of the ground doesn't have that surrounding ground mass to help it. Uh, they, they're just going to dry out faster and they're usually not real soil either. So uh, definitely you need to be doing that. And then the last recommendation that I would give you here is drip irrigation. Whenever possible, uh, drip irrigation is going to be better for your plants overall. Uh, it waters in the root zone instead of kind of just watering all over. It keeps the water off of the leaves, which helps to prevent disease issues. It keeps the water from splashing on the ground, which again helps to prevent disease issues. Uh, it, it waters deeper and longer and, and just as overall healthier for your plants. Plus it keeps the weeds down too. You know, since we switched to a drip irrigation system, which it's been probably about 12 years ago now, uh, we, our, our weeding issues are, are way better than they were. We still weed quite a bit in the spring because of the rain, but um, you know, drip irrigation is just great for, for weeding as well. Okay, so that's my first suggestion, is just to make sure that you continue to do your watering, okay? Next is mulch. So mulch is a, a great option for you to help your garden when, when it gets hot. Uh, it does a couple of different things for you. Number one, it keeps the, the soil cool, which helps the plants. Now, in the spring, we don't want that. We want the soil to get warm in the spring, but in the summer, we want those roots to stay nice and cool and uh, that soil to stay cool. The other thing that mulching does is it helps to keep the soil moist. So it's going to keep that water that you're putting on in step one, it's going to keep that water uh, in the ground longer, keep it from evaporating, and, and kind of just hold in that moisture. So mulching is a great option. My number one recommendation for mulch is compost. So I always like compost uh, because not only is it going to uh, mulch and do the things that mulch do, but then it's also going to improve the soil as it breaks down. So compost is a great option, but you can also use grass clippings. I use grass clippings quite often. Uh, leaves, especially shredded leaves, so if you kind of run over them with the lawnmower first, uh, those are going to be uh, really uh, good as mulch. And then you could also use straw as well. I don't recommend hay. So here I'm talking about either alfalfa hay or grass hay. Both of those usually have a pretty high weed content, and so you're going to end up bringing more weeds into your garden uh, than you may be preventing with the mulch. And so again, compost, grass clippings, leaves, or straw are the things that I recommend for mulching. Um, okay, and it looks like we're already got some questions, so guys, don't don't uh, feel like I'm ignoring you. I will get to your questions when we get to the end, and and my wife AJ is already got several things over here so we're, we're trying to catch all your questions and I'll, and I'll answer those as we get to the end of the, the presentation. Let me take just a little quick break though and get a drink. Okay. All right. I saw that we had some people that were already asking about shade cloth and so um, this is really good. Let me turn myself off here for just a second. This is actually a picture of our peppers uh, from last year and we do this every year with our peppers as it starts to get hot about right now I haven't put my shade cloth out yet but I probably will in the next uh, week or so uh, we we will cover some of our plants with shade cloth okay so actual shade cloth is probably your best choice and you should be looking at um, 
percentage wise, I, I would recommend like a 30% shade cloth. That means that, that it's, you know, that, that it's letting 70% um, of the sun through and, and blocking 30%. You could go as high as 50% if you wanted, but I think a 30% shade cloth is a, a pretty good option for you. Uh, is what shade cloth is going to do is it's, it brings the temperature down and reduces the stress on your plants. And we're not going to use it on everything. Uh, there's a lot of plants that are going to be okay without uh, shade cloth and, and they're going to do just fine. You know, beans and, and onions and garlic and potatoes and things like that are going to do just fine. But there are some plants that are going to be pretty stressed. And you can see down in number four, I've got a list, you know, uh, any of the greens that you're growing. So, you know, summertime greens would be things like kale or collards. Uh, maybe, you know, you maybe even some lettuce or something like that. Those are always going to do better with some shade cloth. Peppers and tomatoes are also going to do uh, well with shade cloths, especially if you do something that gives them some shade in the late afternoon. When it really gets that, that just really scorching hot late afternoon, you know, from, from about 2 o'clock until about 5 o'clock, that burning sun. If you can do something to kind of block that sun, uh, during that time frame, that is really going to help and benefit uh, some of your plants. And, and again, you know, greens, peppers, tomatoes, cool season plants are the things that I'm going to recommend. Now, if you've got, you know, you live somewhere like possibly, uh, you know, I've got friends that live up in the Pacific Northwest and, and they, you know, they usually have pretty reasonable summers in the area that they live in at least. And, uh, but they will occasionally get these screaming hot, spells that come in and they, they get up to close to 100 degrees and, and their plants aren't really used to that. But it's only, you know, it only lasts for a few days. If you get those kind of situations, then you could kind of improvise on your shade. You could use light fabric row covers. You could use curtains. You could use bed sheets. You know, there's been times where I've actually, you know, like we've had a, a, a an early heat spell. In fact, it was two years ago. We had like five days early in June that went over 100 degrees, which is really unusual for us. And my peas weren't done. And so I actually took a couple of tomato cages out and stuck them in the ground and just threw some old bed sheets over my peas to kind of give them some shade and some protection from that heat and that, that sun. So uh, shade cloth is a great option, especially people that live further south um, are, are going to probably really want to get into shade cloth and uh, I you know a lot of people will suspend the shade cloth use some poles and, and get it up and suspend it and, and kind of tent like over their gardens in, in certain times of the year just to help to protect from that heat but that is a great option for you and then I do have kind of a list of some other ideas here that um, will help when things are heat, okay, or when, when things are hot. <laughs> and so here's a kind of a list of some other things that you can do. And the first one is to choose some heat loving plants. And one super interesting thing that I, I just recently learned is uh, plants that, that come from the Mediterranean seem to be extra heat tolerant. So like Roma tomatoes, uh, eggplant, things like that, basil, seem to just be extra uh, extra tolerant of heat. The other thing that you should do is if you live in an area that has a lot of heat and, and, and really hot summers is look at your, your seed catalogs when you're ordering seeds. There are a lot of varieties that um, are heat tolerant and, it, and if you're shopping from a good seed company they ought to be telling you that you know they, they should be telling you in your you know in the paperwork that they've got you know hey these are great heat tolerant tomatoes or these are you know extra heat tolerant beans or you know whatever it is so look for those heat loving varieties okay next suggestion is to harvest often and the reason why that is a suggestion is because as our plants are producing so let's use beans as an example okay as our plants are producing beans at first their focus is just on growing the bean itself the structure of the bean but if we don't harvest then the plant kind of 
clicks a little bit and it switches to reproduction mode and it really starts to swell the seeds inside and the same thing with as a, as a tomato finally starts to ripen the plant focuses on that that final reproduction stage and that causes a lot of stress on the plant and so if we're harvesting often and possibly even harvesting a little bit early so maybe you know your tomatoes might be a day or two before they're really as ready as you want them maybe go ahead and harvest those now bring them in and let them finish off on the countertop because that again reduces stress when we take the the fruit load off and we and the plant isn't focusing on that final little bit of ripening that will kind of help to reduce the stress on the plants um, one thing to be aware of is that when it does get hot, you are going to see a lot of flower drop. And I, I often will have questions from people saying, hey, why are my tomato blossoms turning brown? And it's because it's 95 degrees outside and, and they basically they abort. Um, and again, that's part of the reason why shade cloth can sometimes come in handy with like tomatoes and eggplant and peppers and things like that because giving reducing that temperature, even, you know, five or 10 degrees, is going to help to prevent that that flower drop and and then with some of the other plants it's going to help um, with bolting as well so you know with the greens and things like that it, it can help to keep them from bolting uh, as well uh, once it gets about 82 degrees with your main garden uh, both raised beds and main bed gardens uh, i would recommend that you stop fertilizing and the reason why is because when we fertilize the plants focus on growth instead of fruit production and, and we want fruit production in the summertime and so once those temperatures get hot if the plants focusing on growth because it's taking in all these nutrients that you just dumped in the soil and it's taking it in and it's putting on a burst of growth that's stressful to the plant and it's not productive to our garden either because we want it to be setting fruit and things like that and so recommendations from a lot of different sources are that we shouldn't fertilize once the temperatures go above 82 degrees now with container gardening that's not quite the same recommendations because we just don't have as many nutrients usually in those containers um, usually with containers we're going to be water, uh, fertilizing about every 10 days and you're going to probably continue that even in the in the heat um, I don't know if you guys can see this picture. Let me turn myself off really quick again. Uh, the next one is intensive planting. Um, and you can see here that this who this isn't my garden. This is just a, a web shot that I took because I, I thought it was a great example of, of intensive gardening. If you plant really tight and close and you ignore those rules that you read on the back of your seed catalogs and you get things really tight in there, that is also going to provide a cooler uh, environment. It's going to protect the soil, keep the water from, from evaporating out. And so intensive planting is another strategy that you can use for dealing with um, the heat. Okay, And then afternoon sun. If you, if you are going to you know, focus on any one thing with your shade cloth and, and, and other things like that, afternoon sun is, is what you need to be considering the most you know that that two o'clock to five o'clock six o'clock you know that that late afternoon sun when it's really intense and really hot and you go outside and it just feels like you're baking those are the times that you know when you need to be thinking about shade cloths and and things like that so um there you go that is my tips for taking care of your uh, garden in the heat. So if you guys have some questions, it looks like we already have four or five. You could go ahead and throw a few more up. Let's do the, the seed drawing and again, or the prize drawing. I, I wanted to again thank Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots, two awesome companies that you guys should go check out for um, sponsoring the seeds. And uh, here are the prize winners. And, and it, for those of you that are kind of just dropping in on YouTube, uh, we are going to be doing these um, these workshops over the next uh, two weeks we're going to be doing several of them so run over to our website which is uh, stony acres our stony acres and uh, <clears throat> you can sign up for these workshops and then that that makes you eligible if you pre-register makes you eligible for the prizes okay all right so winners for the 25 dollars gift certificates these are to honest seed company to use on their website are tina ortez margo white and Patricia Williams. Congratulations, guys. 
And then the Smart Pot winners, um, the 15 gallon Smart Pot goes to Carl Allen and the five gallon Smart Pot goes to Cynthia Fedor. So very cool. Thanks again to the, uh, our sponsors for sponsoring those. Um, I, w before we start the questions, one more reminder that we do have that free year-round gardening course that I would love to have you guys go sign up for. There's a link down in the description of this video for that. Um, so go sign up for that and then make sure that you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, make sure that you subscribe because um, we are, like I say, we are going to be doing a bunch of these web um, uh, web workshops and uh, we'll, we'll be doing those and, and that'll give you an opportunity to sign up and be part of the the prize drawing as well okay all right so let's see I, can't, I think we're about done yeah so let me just I'm just gonna make myself big again and we'll answer some questions I'm gonna take another drink um, okay so I was planning on somewhere between a half hour to 45 minutes um, so we can go as long as you guys want with questions. Uh, I did a little Q&A last, um, I think it was on Tuesday, and I was only planning on about 10 minutes, went 15, and everybody was mad at me for <laughs> not going longer. So uh, if you guys uh, want to uh, ask questions, go for it. All right, so let's go ahead and answer the questions that I already see here. Uh, Tammy really wanted to know about shade cloth. I think we covered that pretty pretty good. One of the things that I will say is there's some really cool science going on right now with some of the, the universities um, that uh, with the shade cloth and in particular with peppers, both green peppers and hot peppers. And it, it's amazing how well some shade cloth helps to protect those plants and keep them from getting uh, sun scald. So, you know, when you get the little white spots on your, your peppers, uh, the shade cloth, since I've started using shade cloth, which we're about five seasons into using shade cloth now, and since I've started doing that on my peppers, once they start flowering, I, I like, I haven't seen any loss from sun scald. So uh, that would be one of the things that I would definitely recommend, okay? Um, all right, uh, Ellie is saying, what is the best drip irrigation system for containers, plastic tubs? So Ellie, I love my PVC drip irrigation system, but that's not going to work for you. Um, the, they're, they're too rigid and are not going not gonna to work really well. There are a ton of different drip irrigation systems out there. I don't have a particular brand that I recommend. Um, just get the, the kind that where you know it has, so it's going to have a mainline tube that kind of looks like a hose. You're going to tap into that with a smaller tube that, that you can then run to your container. And uh, depending on what type of plant is growing in it, you may have like a, a little soaker system that circles the plants, or you may have an emitter system in there. But there's a lot of great options. Um, Amazon has a ton, uh, Gardener Supply, there's, there's just a lot of good options out there um, for you on drip systems. You can even, you know, find those, you ought to be able to find those at your local nurseries, or even like the big box stores, you know, the Home Depots and Lowe's and places like that. So you ought to be able to find those. Um, can you make liquid fertilizer from the same plant clippings that you use on the same plant? Um, I don't know why you couldn't. I don't do that myself. I, I, I usually will just turn my plant clippings into compost and then put it back into the soil that way. But um, as long as the plant isn't diseased, so you know you don't. If you've got a tomato plant that looks like it's getting blight and you're cutting those those early leaves off that are starting to get some blight on them, do not use those. Uh, to make fertilizer, liquid fertilizer out of. Um, anything that looks diseased, we don't want to be putting more disease back on the plants. But, but there really isn't a reason why you, you couldn't be using those, those clippings for that. Um, okay, um, Roofers54 says, I have a green sheer curtain that I plan to use for shade cloth. Is that bad? Um, the, only, the only problem with improvised shade cloths is if you're using them long term you don't know how much light is actually getting through so that would be the only thing if you're if you're just using it like in the afternoon you're t putting it up in the afternoon and taking it down then that would probably be just fine but um, 
long term, you don't know how much light is is getting. You know, it might be blocking 70% of the light, and that's too much. Then, then your your plants are not going to be getting enough sunlight. Um, so that would be my only worry with that. Uh, but you know, for kind of temporary things, uh, it, that would be fine. Um, okay, Annie is in North Carolina. What is the best time to water? Early in the morning or late in the evening? We went over that a little bit earlier, Annie. Uh, morning is best. Evening is second best, okay? So you shouldn't water at night and you shouldn't water in the middle of the day for different reasons, okay? We don't water at night because we don't want water on the leaves because that can cause fungal issues. Um, we don't water in the middle of the day because there's usually more wind and more evaporation and so it wastes water, okay? The whole wives tale about water on the leaves causing them to get burned, that's actually not true. Uh, that doesn't happen. But we don't water in the middle of the day because we don't want to lose the water to evaporation. Morning is best. Early evening, like, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock before sunset is next best. Um, don't do it at night. Don't do it in the middle of the day, okay? Um, Caleb. Can I extend the life of my snap peas? Planted them a bit late and they're now only starting to flower. Um, shade will actually help uh, Caleb with that. Uh, so if they're starting to flower, you're getting, and especially with snap peas, you're getting close. Um, you can't extend the harvest. I mean, the snap peas are kind of only a one-time harvest thing, but you definitely could, you know, you could put some shade cloth up and, and see if that helps. Uh, it is pretty late in the year for peas. We're, we're doing our very last harvest of our peas right now, but uh, shade is definitely going to help that, okay? Um, okay, Roofers is asking, when am I going to do the cold frame workshop? Um, I should know that, and I don't. It's the week of the 15th, and I think, I think that the cold frame workshop is on July 14th. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. It could be the 12th, the 13th, or the 14th. I'm doing workshops all three of those days, and one of those is on cold frames. So, um, yeah, I'll, uh, that will be published, so just keep watching the channel, or you can go sign up uh, for our email list, and, and I'll email that out to you as well. Um, okay, um, Mike is saying his potatoes have gone yellow and look half dead. Is it a lost cause? Um, I started watering with sprinklers, gravity fed off of a pond, and working on chopping down the weeds and the mulch. Okay, um, so Mike, that's that one's a little tough for me to answer without seeing them. Uh, you could, depending on when you planted them, it could be time to harvest. Uh, you know, so if this is like a March planting, they might be dying off because that's what happens when they're ready to harvest. Um, if they have not been getting water, then then you know that could be what's going on too. Um, you probably, if they, you know, if they just haven't been getting water and they, they, you know, need some, some TLC, then I would, I would say that, you know, you would probably be okay to, to try and resurrect them. The one thing that I'll warn you about is you may have funny shaped um, potatoes. So they may have started to set their, their fruit underground and then um, is what happens is when they get stressed like that, they'll stop growing the fruit. And then when they get unstressed, they start growing. And then that's when we get the ones that look like toes and, and funky and stuff like that. But you should probably be okay to kind of resurrect them. Um, or if they've been in for 90 days, they, you know, it just may be that they're dying off and, and getting ready to harvest. So uh, that's kind of what we need to answer. I was going to look here and see if you happen to... Okay, yeah, I don't see that. Okay, um, all right, so how do you judge the quality of shade cloth? What factors do you look for? Um, don't get the cheapest. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if we're looking at two or three different brands and, and you know, I would at least go with the mid-priced or the, the more expensive one, um, I would buy it from a reputable source um, or... I'm, I'm not a giant fan of Amazon all the time for, for, for buying, you know, things on Amazon. Sometimes it, it's okay, but um, normally I would probably look to, you know, some of the seed companies or Gardener Supply, somewhere like that. 
they're going to have a little bit better quality stuff. The, the, the big piece that I have, I actually bought from a neighbor who was retiring and moving to an apartment. And, and, uh, and so I, I bought her all of her stuff here a few years ago. Um, so I, I don't, you know, I, I haven't heard of, of real problems. Eventually it's going to wear out, but you know, mine's 10 years. I've had it for 10 years. Um, I don't know how long she had it for. So, you know, just get, get a good solid quality uh, and, and you should be okay. I, I don't know that there's like a criteria that I can give you to judge by though. Um, just choose, you know, from a, a reputable source, I think is probably your best choice there. Um, okay, Virtual Cockpit asks, when squashes are wilting from the heat, is it best to water or put shade cloth on? So squash do get a little wimpy about the heat. Um, so they'll, they'll wilt. Uh, one of the things, you know, I, I went out just two days ago and, and mine were kind of wilting uh, a little bit. Um, and, and so, again, that morning water is going to help that. Uh, quite a bit. I normally don't, I mean, it, if, if your squash plants are still small, then, then maybe you could, you could use some shade to protect them until they get a little bit bigger. But squash gets so big and so sprawling that it, it's going to be really hard to try and protect those with a shade cloth and, and not very practical. So I might recommend that if they, you know, if they're really getting wilty, maybe you need to up your watering game a little bit. Maybe you need to get in there to the base and put some mulch down to try and help uh, protect the, the soil right around the base of the plant a little bit more. That can also help with some of your pest issues as well. Uh, so that you know that would probably be my first recommendation is to, to maybe you're not watering quite enough or maybe you, you know you need to get some mulch down or something to help protect those it, it, it'll be pretty impractical as those squash continue to grow to to really protect them as they kind of sprawl out okay all right sherry is asking is it too late to plant more corn also what veggies can handle being planted in this heat if any okay great questions um, I just actually did a video on this, so go to the channel if you want a ton of more details. Uh, corn, I did not put corn on my list of things to plant in July. It depends kind of, Sherry, on where you live. Um, I would say, you know, if you're in zone 7, 8, and 9, you probably have plenty of time to still plant corn. Here in zone 6, I might be able to get away with planting corn in July. But you need to choose, uh, so you got to be very specific with the varieties you choose. So there are some short maturing sweet corn varieties that mature in like 60 to 80 days. Those might make it, okay? The one disadvantage of those is, is they're not as good, um, if that makes sense. So they're, they're, they're not the, like the triple sweets and the serendipities and things like that. The, the, the shorter maturing varieties aren't as sweet. Uh, we've grown a few of those in the past and they were fine. I mean, they're good sweet corn, but they're not those just like amazing, you could eat it raw type corns. So, um, and then other things that you could plant in the heat, uh, go check that video out for the long list. Let me think right now though, um, you know, you could still plant this time of year, you could be planting summer squashes. So zucchini, crookneck squash, and patapan. Uh, you could be doing beans. You could be, but just green beans. It's too late um, in most areas to plant like shelling beans because we don't have enough time until frost. But green beans, you could still do green beans, both pole beans. This early, you could still do pole beans, but bush beans as well. Um, you could maybe try like collards or kale. Uh, maybe some beets uh, in an area that gets a little bit of shade for part of the day uh, could probably be okay as well. I'm trying to think what else was on my list. It, it, it's, there was like 13 things on the list I can't remember right now. So the other thing is is that this time of year you guys should be thinking about getting your fall like broccoli and cabbage and cauliflower. Those seedlings started indoors as well. Okay. All right. Um, my peppers are yellow. Your eggplant as well. They don't seem to be growing either. Lost cause. Um, this is Sophia asking that. Again, I, I, I always hate to diagnose without being able to see it. And sometimes it's even hard with, the, with seeing it. But if they're yellow, that sometimes indicates to me that there's some type of a nutrient issue. So um, have you been fertilizing it? Um, have you possibly been overwatering and you've washed away nutrients? 
So I would look at those kind of things. Uh, you could you could try you know give them give them a week, uh, put some a good organic fertilizer down, uh, either a you know a granular fertilizer or a liquid fertilizer. Uh, there's several different really good organic liquid fertilizers out there. You could you could see if that helps. Um, but again, it's it's tough for me to diagnose without actually seeing the pictures um, for sure. But you know that would kind of be my recommendation is to uh, uh, maybe see if they need a little fertilizer uh, and then then for next year work on your soil fertility get some compost in there and stuff like that okay all right Megan is asking what temperatures benefit from say shade cloth and does humidity affect the need um, humidity I don't have a lot of experience with humidity because we live here in the dry west um, but I do know that a lot of uh, gardeners that I follow and, and gardeners that I know that live in the south and in the more humid areas do occasionally use shade cloth. Uh, I would say don't worry about shade cloth until your temperatures start to get into the to, to the 90s. Definitely over 100, you're, you're going to see some stress and you could be putting some shade cloth up then. Humidity... Uh, is, is more than anything is going to be give you some disease worries um, you know just fungal diseases and stuff like that but uh, you know anything once you get 90 95 degrees Fahrenheit sorry for the Canadians that are watching right now I, I don't know the Celsius conversion for that but um, though you know that that's that's when I would start worrying about it Caleb is asking um, Use window glass over your brassicas and lettuce in early spring. Would the glass provide protection from the sun in the summer months? No. Opposite. It would make it hotter um, under under those conditions. And so I would definitely not use window glass. You know, my cold frames just go away completely because cold frames and, and that glass brings the temperature up about 20 or 30 degrees, which is why it's so great in the spring. You don't want you don't want that happening in the you know in the summertime. Melody, what type of drip irrigation do I recommend? Um, I use a PVC drip irrigation that I did myself. You guys can check out some of my videos on that. Um, but it, it's basically just using either half inch or three quarter inch PVC pipe with holes drilled in. And, uh, and then it kind of all goes to a main line and, and that's, that's what we use. And that's what I recommend because it's inexpensive, very easy to use, very flexible. Um, so that's that's what I, I use but there's also all kinds of great you know any drip irrigation system is going to be great so the you know the hoses with the emitters uh, soaker hoses are pretty good the, the only disadvantage of a soaker hose is that the water comes out all the way along the length of the hose so you end up watering areas that don't really need to be watered but it's still better than sprinklers uh, for sure okay um, Okay, let me see, my peppers, okay, my pepper fruits, uh, Steve is asking, um, my pepper fruits have been getting shrunken brown spots on the middle and lower portions of the fruit. Are you familiar with that cause? You're in Georgia, um, 8A, June was excessively hot. Okay, uh, that, Steve, is probably, um, again, I'd have to see it to be 100% sure, but it sounds like to me that that is sun scald and shade cloth will resolve that issue. Um, and I keep referring you guys out to my website, but if you go to Our Stony Acres, um, I actually wrote an article on using shade cloth on peppers specifically, um, and it's amazing. Using, I, we, we, no matter what the temperature is, after about the 1st of July, we put a shade cloth over our peppers and we leave it there all year, and we never have sun scald. So that, that's probably what's happening there, and that would be your solution, is to um, you know, to, to get those shaded and protected from the sun. Um, what about using banana water or rice water for fertilizer in this heat? Um, I mean, if you if your plants absolutely feel like they need fertilizer, then yes, you could do that. Um, you, the one thing that you guys need to understand about me and, and my uh, my theory on gardening is if it's in the ground, the containers are a totally different story, but if it's in the ground, I, I don't fertilize. The only thing I fertilize is my onions and occasionally my corn. Everything else I allow my soil for, for <laughs> my soil, the yumminess of the soil, um, I can't say the word now, but um, 
I, I allow that to, um, to take care of it. So I just make sure that I take good care of my soil. I have put compost in every year. I'm adding organic material all the time. If you're taking care of your soil, you shouldn't need to fertilize. Um, and if you're putting mulches down, and again, using compost as a mulch, your, your, um, your soil is just gonna be full of nutrients and you won't need to worry about fertilizing too much. So, um, but I don't think you know banana water or rice water is really going to do much in the heat because those are pretty low, um, you know, low nutrient fertilizers. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it's gonna hurt them for sure. Um, okay, planted potatoes in bags this year. How do I know when to harvest? have a video on that too. <laughs> but uh, the, the easy way to know with harvesting potatoes is they start to die back. So um, no, you, you should look up the variety. So, you know, like for example, one of our favorites is red Pontiacs and they usually mature in about a hundred days. So have that in your mind. And then is what will happen is you'll have these lush pretty plants. You may or may not have flowers on them at some point in the season. Mine are flowering right now. You'll have these nice lush pretty plants and then all of a sudden they'll turn brown and they'll start to fall over and you'll go, oh no! And new gardeners are always like, what am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. That's what happens. So potatoes will start to die back when those when those vines start to die back. That's when it's time to harvest. And so uh, Anytime after, well, any actually anytime after you see flowers, there's potatoes present. Um, but I usually wait until those vines have died back for the most part, and then that's when you harvest. So depending on when you planted, you know, for, for me, that's not going to happen for another 45 days because ours have only been in for 45 days. But, you know, if you maybe are, are in an area where you can plant in March or, or February, then now is probably the time when that's starting to happen. But when those die back, that's that's when you know that it's ready to. And again, much more detailed video on my channel about that as well. Uh, it's actually one of our most popular videos. And then top 10 veggies to grow in a hot zone. Um, Roma tomatoes. I don't know that I'm going to have 10 um, off the top of my head. Roma tomatoes, uh, potatoes, peppers, uh, eggplant, corn, sweet corn or popcorn, squash, any type of squash, so um, summer squashes or winter squashes, um, green beans, either bush beans or uh, pole beans, and then dried beans as well. So like your pinto beans, your black beans, uh, those are going to do well uh, also. So that was, I don't know if that was 10, but that would kind of be my recommendations for uh, best to grow. Okay. All right. Um, looks like we are about out of questions and uh, we are 47, 48 minutes into this. So I think we'll probably call it a wrap. Now we are going, like I said, we're going to be doing these um, every so well, quite often here for the next. So we'll have another one next Friday and that one's going to be on growing spinach in the fall and winter and spring. Um, one planting for eight, eight months worth of harvest. And then we'll do um, we'll do some fall and winter gardening ones the following week. Um, so we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Watch the channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and click the notification bell. That way, you, when I put posts up about uh, things that are upcoming, you'll see those. Or you can run over to our website, which is our o u r our stony acres .com, and just sign up for our email list. And I email out everybody, uh, you know, information on all these workshops that we're going to be doing. So we will have another workshop. I'll get that set up and organized um, over the weekend and you guys can go sign up for that. And we'll have the same prizes again uh, from Honest Seed Company and Smart Pots, which are our sponsors. Again, awesome companies. Go check them out. And then make sure you go check out the, um, check out the, uh, year-round gardening mini course as well. Uh, link down there. Okay, I'm, I'm just kind of looking really quick. Um, I don't want to go too much longer, but um, I missed a question about black spots on pepper stems. I'm sorry I didn't see that one. And without um, without seeing them, I, I don't I don't know. You know, I would have to look at them and, uh, you know, I'd have to see a picture to know for sure. So, uh, you know, it could be insect damage. It could be some type of fungal disease. Um, so, yeah. 
Not sure I can answer that one without seeing a picture of it. So, okay, guys, this was fun. Um, thank you for all your questions. Um, great, uh, great questions. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, be back and do these again uh, really soon. So um, everybody have a good week and a good weekend. If you live here in the United States, have a happy 4th of July. And uh, we will talk to you guys next week, okay? All right, thanks very much. Glad this all worked. Go sign up for the year-round gardening mini course. Happy gardening, guys. See you later.